A week ago, more than 60% of Australians rejected reforming the constitution to create a new Indigenous voice. Indigenous leaders called for a week of silence to grieve and mourn over the results, and also requested that the country fly the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flags at half-mast out of respect. Now that the week of silence is over, Indigenous leaders have penned an open letter to Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, as well as MPs and Senators, calling the results appalling and mean-spirited. Specifically, they wrote that people who came to our country in only the last 235 years would reject the recognition of this continent's first peoples on our sacred land which we have cared for and nurtured for more than 65,000 years is so appalling and mean-spirited as to be utterly unbelievable a week following. The constitution belongs to white people, and no reform of it that includes our peoples will ever succeed. It is unclear who signed the letter, but it's understood that some Aboriginal leaders had distanced themselves from an earlier draft of this statement, and did not want their names associated with it. The Guardian are reporting that Indigenous groups claim the referendum unleashed a tsunami of racism. The scale of deliberate disinformation and misinformation was unprecedented, and it proliferated unchecked on social media, repeated in mainstream media, and unleashed a tsunami of racism against our people. SBS are reporting, Shameful act, unprecedented, and, again, a tsunami of racism. The truth is that the majority of Australians have committed a shameful act, whether knowingly or not, and there is nothing positive to be interpreted from it. The Northern Territory Aboriginal Land Councils released a statement saying, The results of the referendum cannot be separated from a deep-seated racism. It is fair to say that not everyone who voted no is racist, but also fair to say that all racists voted no. The vitriol and hatred that were part of the campaign existed prior to, but were given license through the process. It seems they still think that by continuing to call the majority of Australians racist, that will somehow win people over. And now that everyone's angry, Jonathan Sharanga Nathan, a candidate for Lord Mayor of Brisbane, is calling for Brisbaneites to start paying the rent to Indigenous organisations, with the Brisbane Council having to fork out tens of millions of dollars in Indigenous grants. According to his bio, he used to live in rental share houses, but now he lives on a small houseboat with his partner on the Brisbane River. I guess they can't afford to rent in Brisbane anymore. That's all right. we can just give tens of millions of dollars of ratepayer money to Indigenous causes instead. And the Queensland Government have decided it's the opportune time to start promoting the teaching of Indigenous languages. Minister for Treaty, Leanne Enoch, today announced that Queensland Indigenous community groups and organisations will be given hundreds of thousands of dollars in new grants to help preserve and revitalise First Nations languages across the state. The government's plan features 40 actions, including using First Nations languages for place names. She said, Ensuring Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages were strong, acknowledged, maintained and accessible was vital to truth-telling amid the path to treaty process. Ensuring children learn Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages is an integral part of preservation. Look, I'm not against people learning languages. I learn languages myself. But I learn languages that I can use. I learn languages that are useful throughout the world. I'm not saying people shouldn't learn Aboriginal languages, but should this be taxpayer funded? Will our children start being forced to learn these languages in schools? According to the Courier Mail, that's exactly where it's headed. Education department pushing for number of schools teaching First Nations languages to exceed 100. According to Crikey, one in three Australian children failed this year's NAPLAN maths and English tests. Perhaps we should be getting our students speaking, comprehending and writing English first before we pursue languages that only a handful of people speak. I'm not trying to be cruel here, but it takes a lot of effort to learn a language. Shouldn't we focus on languages that will be useful and helpful to our children as they grow up in the modern world? At the very least, get them to a level of competency in English and maths before we start pushing, essentially, our political agenda on them. I'm all for people learning Aboriginal languages, but I don't think it should be taxpayer funded. Taxpayer money should be used in the most efficient way possible to prepare our children, including Aboriginal children, with the knowledge they need to be successful in the modern world. (music) 